Am I the antagonist for having a college fund come with conditions? I, 47 male, have a daughter, 19 female, who is class of 2022. Over the years, I have set aside a college fund for her, enough for any decent four-year university. She has been pretty indecisive about what she wants to do after high school, and I understand, it's a wildly young age to completely know what you want to do for the rest of your life. So when she said she wanted to take some time off for college, I was all for it, hoping she'd take the time to think things over. She came to my wife and me yesterday and said next semester she wants to go to school. I said great and started asking the standard questions like what she decided to study and where she wanted to go. She had no answer for either of the questions. I told her if she's still unsure the what's and where's of her decision she should maybe think about taking her genes at the local community college to save money and not waste her time. To note, I will give her any money not used in her college fund after she graduates for a down payment or for some getting started money depending on how much is left over. She was resistant to the idea of community college and insisted she wants to go to a four-year. I told her that I don't want her going to a four-year just to waste her time. I told her that I was unsure of what I wanted to do when I went to a four-year and ended up taking classes I didn't need to and having to spend time making classes up that I should have been taking years before. I don't want her to be in the same situation I was. I told her if she wants to go to a four-year that's fine, but if she doesn't have a set goal in mind then I'm not paying for it. If she decides what field she wants to go into then I would be happy to do it. If she doesn't know what she wants to do but still wants to take classes then I am more than happy to pay for those, but I'm not going to waste my money for her to fuck around for a couple years. She is also welcome to take more time to think about things before going to college, as the money isn't going anywhere and we are in no hurry to push her out of the nest. She wasn't too thrilled about my conditions and begged me to pay for a four year. I told her that I will not do that but I gave her other options to pick from. I reassured her that I loved her and ended the conversation at that. My wife agrees with me, but is overall more sympathetic to our daughter. I said she is welcome to take all the time she needs, and I've been more than generous with her. Am I the antagonist? Edit, I'm not asking her to declare a major or decide a career. I'm asking for some kind of idea of what she wants to do. NTA Universities are overpriced for the value received. NTA. Op, I am betting that she suddenly wants to go to school at a four-year, because prestige, because all her friends are posting about buying their gear and moving out, and going off to live in dorms, etc. Very exciting. It's FOMO. How much exposure has your daughter had to adults who have jobs and will talk about them? Like, has she seen you or your wife at work? Has she asked Uncle Brad what it's like to run his own business? Anything. It might be worthwhile to line your daughter up with a counselor who can provide aptitude tests and career counseling. She seems to be floundering in Idaho land right now. For what it's worth, I started uni at 17 and did exactly what you fear your daughter will do, registered late so wasted my first semester on utterly useless subjects, tanked them all, and got put on academic probation. Then I had to spend an extra half year retaking those stupid courses to pull up the marks, all the things. If only someone had listened when I said I wanted a gap year off to work, earn some money and grow up a bit. That first year wound up being a demoralizing waste of everyone's money and my time. Props to you for seeing the pitfall. It's your money, so I guess your decision how it's spent, but I'd like to give you some food for thought. I was very sure when I went to a four years, very expensive, private, college what I wanted to major in. However, once I started those classes, I realized it wasn't actually for me and switched majors. If I had not been in that four-year environment, exposed to all of those opportunities, I wouldn't have known what I wanted to really major in. I've had a lot of people ask me why I didn't do my core classes at a community college, but honestly, being immersed in the varied academic setting of the four years was invaluable. Maybe your daughter needs the exposure to all of the possibilities to help her narrow her focus. In my experience, that doesn't happen on the same level at a community college. Very soft not the a-hole.
It's strange to read about a parent complaining about their kid begging to be allowed to go to university and the parent saying no. I understand where you're coming from, but I think the danger here is you might end up discouraging her from wanting to go to college slash university at all. Am I the antagonist for not giving my parents my inheritance even though I technically don't need it? My 24 female great-grandfather passed from COVID in 2020. He was 107. In the event of his death, our grandmother, his daughter, was to give us, myself and my sisters, both 21 female, his graduation present. Basically, a portion of our inheritance. This particular check was about $20,000 per kid and was kept aside for us three to have when we graduated college to help pay off some student loans, with more on the way as we aged. I got very lucky in life for someone my age, and I'm aware of this. I went to a private college with almost 170 k in scholarships and had about 30 k in federal loans after I was done and got my degree. With the loan forbearance, I've managed to get my loans down to 18 k Yesterday, as many know, the president announced 10 k in student loan forgiveness. I happen to qualify, which will knock my loans down to 8 k Literally. All day. My parents have been harassing me to give back great-grandpa's money. Basically, they found out that my grandparents handed it over a couple months ago because we weren't expecting the last forbearance extension. According to my grandma, after the 10K announcement, my mom called and asked what they would do with my inheritance, and grandma explained she already gave it to me. My parents are saying that, with the money I earn at my job and my 10K forgiveness, I don't need the money. My dad wants to take some courses that will enhance his business and my mom wants to take some hobby art courses. I don't know what to call them. They're like classes to paint and stuff like that, but they aren't college courses. Honestly, they are kind of right. I mean, on paper, I don't really need the inheritance because I can pay off the 8K easily before the loans are even due in January. However, it's mine. Great-grandpa had a stipulation that anything left over from the loans, if there was something, if ours to keep. It's not for anyone else, and my parents know this. Not to mention, I believe my mother got a rather healthy inheritance from him as well, so I don't see why they need my money specifically. My grandparents are super angry at my parents for asking me for this. But they're the only ones on my side. CMY sisters think I owe my parents for all they've done for me, and my parents are going by the what's yours is mine as we spent XYZ to raise you, so you owe us now that you're functioning. It's really tiresome and really annoying. I kinda just wanna block my whole family except my grandparents. But even my friends are kinda leaning into what my parents are saying. One even suggested that I was spoiled and that I should at least give them the 12K left over to be fair. I'm too tired to deal with this. Am I the antagonist? NTA. If your sisters are so generous, let them give their inheritance to their parents. It's easy to be generous with other people's money. NTA. As a mom, I think it's incredibly messed up when parents try to tell their children that the children, whom they brought into their family and or made exist in the case of bio families, owe anything for the cost of being raised. That's not how that works, not even a little bit. You owe your parents nothing. You earned the scholarships, you got yourself a job. Also, you're still extremely young. That money could be used to start a nest egg or build an emergency fund if anything unexpected happened to your health or job. You have, hopefully, a long life left ahead of you and having a cushion is a gift that many never receive. Your parents don't need the money for essentials like food or shelter or medical care. They want it for hobbies. They're adults. They can save their own DMN money to fund their hobbies. I'm going to give you some financial advice here from another student debtor, so take it as you want. Do not count that 10K AS if ITS guaranteed. Biden only signed an executive action. This does not have the same legal weight as a bill which is voted on by Congress. Will it come through? Maybe. Maybe it won't. None of us knows until we see how it shakes out. Do not ever make plans for your financial future based on the promises of the government. 
You weren't bequeathed the money because you needed it. He left it to you because he wanted you to have it. Note, he left it to you, not your parents. If you wanted your parents to have it, he would have left it to them. Honor your great-grandfather's wishes and put it away for a rainy day if you don't need it now. Am I the antagonist for refusing to babysit my grandchildren? I have 45 has two daughters who are 26 and 17. This is about my oldest. She has two children who are F4 and M2. I love them with all my heart, and but I refuse to let my daughter or her husband dump their kids on me whenever they feel like it. When I got pregnant with my daughters, I and my husband decided that I would be a stay-at-home mom slash wife, and I grew envious of having my husband work while all I did was take care of the kids. I felt like my whole identity was being a mother, and I hated it, but I knew we didn't have money to have a babysitter. When my oldest daughter was 16, we were in a better place financially, so I finally took the steps toward getting into my dream career with the help of my husband. Fast forward now, I love my career and I love working, but of course, I barely have time to myself except for today. Today, I was able to get off early and I decided to kind of pamper myself. Since I and my husband always work, we are barely able to spend the money we earn, so I decided to go shopping because my husband needed a new wardrobe and my youngest daughter wanted a new computer for school. As I was getting ready to leave the house, I heard a knock on the door, and when I opened it, I saw my two grandchildren. I was confused and looked around for their father and mother until I saw them driving away. I was instantly pissed and told my grandchildren to come in and sit down while I called their mother. I went into another room and told her to come back and get the kids because I was busy today. She told me that she and her husband were going on a date because we were having marital issues and they needed time to themselves. I told her that I didn't care and that she should have called a babysitter because I wasn't her free babysitter and she needed to come to get her kids. She got an attitude and said that I was their grandmother and I should be happy to watch them. I agreed that I was their grandmother, but she was their mother and I would have never pulled this stunt on my mother. I also told her if she didn't come to get her kids, I would be taking them to the police station. I wouldn't do that. She ended up picking them up and told me that I would never see them again and I told her that was completely okay because I didn't like being disrespected like that. My youngest was there the whole time during this situation and she agreed with me, but my husband doesn't so Reddit am I the antagonist? NTA, leaving young kids on a doorstep without even making sure someone was there is irresponsible at best and criminal at worst. Not even asking for someone to babysit is incredibly disrespectful and an A.H. move. Your daughter is immature and selfish. NTA, it's always an asshole move to drop kids off someplace unannounced. NTA, she chose to have her children, you didn't, well, at least not hers. Your daughter needs to understand you are your own person, who needs a time to herself and is busy sometimes, also that she isn't owed free babysitting from anyone. You're nosy, bossy, and won't step in when you cause absolute chaos in others' lives. You coerced her to keep the baby. You called CPS because dad smokes pot, with no other info. Now that you've napalmed their arrangement, you won't step in and watch the kid you coerced her to keep in the first place. Am I the antagonist for refusing to eat food my partner made after it was left out overnight? This morning when we woke up, my partner told me that he cooked the chicken that was in our fridge before going to bed because he didn't want it to go to waste. He said he finished cooking around midnight and was too tired to let it cool before refrigerating it, so he left it on the stove. We've talked about food storage before, and I've told him I won't eat meat that has been left out for more than two hours, because everything I've read says, after that time, bacteria starts multiplying at a rapid rate. So again, I told him I won't eat it, and I won't let our toddler eat it either. He got angry and said he was trying to do something nice and his mom always cooks this way and it's been fine. I said if he could show me one article that says it's okay to eat meat that's been left out for over 7 hours, I'd consider it, but otherwise, he was free to do as he chose, but our child and I would not be eating it. He was in a bad mood for a few hours, and later this evening when he seemed in a better mood, I tried to talk about it again, to get him to understand my perspective. 
He again was upset and said he had been trying to do something nice, but I asked, if we've had this discussion before and he knew I'm against eating meat that's been left out, how is it being nice to me? It's forcing me to either do something I don't want to do, or argue with him, which is not how I wanted to spend my day. I just don't know how to be appreciative of someone doing something for me that they know I won't like. The conversation ended poorly, with us arguing again, after he refused to acknowledge that we shouldn't eat meat that's been left out, and telling me that I have too many rules. Am I wrong here? EW, not the a-hole. Don't risk getting you or your kids sick over your husband's bad take. NTA, which seems obviously to everyone but your husband, apparently. His gesture of niceness is actually him posturing as a victim. My dad did this a ton, and it's really uncomfortable and annoying. If you can, try not to play into it. Hopefully he'll either get bored of playing victim in his pseudo-generosity slash kindness, or he'll do some counseling and mature into having healthier conversation and conflict resolution habits and food safety practices lol. NTA if he wants to cook he needs to learn food safety. Food poisoning is no joke, and there was no reason to not put the food away in time so everyone could enjoy it later. Of course you shouldn't give yourself food poisoning so your husband's ego isn't hurt. And definitely don't feed that to your child, you're being a good mom and using your common sense. Am I the antagonist for telling my mom that her and my dad's ignorance is going to cost them their son? I, 20 female, have always been close to my brother A, 17 male. We've honestly been best friends since the day he was born, and though he absolutely gets on my nerves like most brothers do, I still love him more than anything and I like having him around. When I moved out of our parents' house at 18, I left my brother with a spare key and told him he could come over whenever he wanted slash needed to. Since I've moved out, A has come around to my apartment pretty much every day. He and our parents have just been arguing a lot lately, and my apartment has basically become his safe haven when he needs it to be. Lately, their arguments have been getting increasingly worse. Most of the conflict has come from our dad, honestly. He's had an issue with the way A dresses and expresses himself. Dad found an eyeshadow palette in A's room a month ago and decided to destroy it in front of him because he doesn't think his son should be wearing makeup. I was really devastated, and so to try and cheer him up, I bought him some other palettes and told him that he could just keep his makeup and stuff at my place so that our parents wouldn't find out. We've been doing this for a while, so all of A's stereotypically feminine belongings, dresses, makeup, etc. are kept in my house for him to have when he comes over. A few days ago, my brother called me crying and said that our parents were yelling at him for continuously disobeying their rules about the things he's allowed to wear slash do. Our dad said some pretty nasty things that I can't actually type out without risking deletion, but it was bad. I ended up going over there and getting my brother so I could drive us both home. He said he isn't planning on going back for a while, and I honestly don't blame him. He stopped answering our mom's calls and texts, so she started calling me instead. She told me I need to convince my brother to come home and to stop enabling all of the things he's doing that we were raised to disagree with. She thinks that I'm undermining her and my father's authority by supporting A's choices and that at the end of the day they both want what's best for their son. I told her that if they keep bullying their child for trying to be himself, they're going to end up not having a son to worry about at all because ignorance like theirs has sent people to their graves and I for one will never forgive her if I have to see A's name etched in stone. I guess my mom told her sister what happened, because then my aunt texted me to say that I was an awful person for saying such a horrible thing to my mother, and that even if I think the way my parents are handling this is wrong, A is still their child and me saying I'd blame them if something happened to him is cruel. Apparently so cruel that mom's been crying about it ever since. I just want to know if I went too far with my words, or if it was something my mom needed to hear. Nope, not the a-hole. She needed to hear it. Whether she will underscore believe underscore it you won't know for a while, but you weren't wrong to tell her. Thank you for defending your brother and being his safe place. NTA
Whether he's going through a phase or discovering his identity, he's not harming anybody. Them stressing him out and forcing him to do and be something he doesn't want to be is extremely mentally debilitating for him. You being there for him and supporting his choices are his only light in this dark tunnel around him. If they don't accept him or learn to live with his choices, they're going to lose him as a son. And if they keep pushing you to be the same, they may lose you as their child as well. Thank you for being the support he needs, because this is one of the many reasons teens and young adults self-harm and it's so easy to avoid if their families just accept and support, not punish. Edit, telling her she's about to lose him should be a wake-up call for her. NTA your parents have no right treating their son that way. Good for you for getting him out that toxic situation and supporting him. I am so glad that your brother has someone so supportive like you in his life. I am sorry to say, but your parents sound like assholes to me. What you told your mother should be a wake-up call for her to treat her son right. And how he dresses or what he chooses to do is not affecting them in any way, and frankly your bother is his own person and it's none of their business. So good on you to stand up to them for your brother. Things like these can really mess up a person's mental health, and none of us want that to happen with your brother. Am I the antagonist for telling my uncle's second wife that she needs to understand his first wife will always be important to our family? My uncle Nick was married to my Aunt Lana until her death seven years ago. They were married before I was even born, so I grew up with her. I was 15 when she died. My cousins, their kids, were eight, seven, and five. My whole family adored Lana as though she was biologically one of us. They had known her most, if not all, of her life. My uncle met his second wife Janet four years ago. They started dating a few months later and they got married two years ago. Janet has struggled with the fact Aunt Lana is still remembered by the family. We still mark the anniversary of her passing. We remember her birthday and leave stuff on her grave. My cousins talk about her a lot. They say how they wish she was still here. It's not that we dedicate our whole lives to it, but when someone brings up family photos, she's in many of them, same with old family videos. She was also responsible for the flower garden in my grandparents' house, and there are a lot of memories of her. Janet has asked my parents and grandparents why we feel the need to remember Aunt Lana as though she were their daughter-slash-sister instead of Nick's wife. Once she grumbled that my youngest cousin spent his art class making something for his mom's grave for Mother's Day instead of making her something. She has asked my parents and grandparents to take down the old family photos that include Lana. It was at my cousin's birthday party a couple of weeks ago, where both sets of his grandparents were posing for a photo, and he had brought up his mom that Janet started grumbling and sulking that she had come up. I asked her if she was okay, and she said she hated mentions of that woman. That she had never seen I.L.'s as fond of a late D.I.L. before that they actually mourn her passing after so long. She said she had figured she would have stepped into her place by now. I told her she needed to understand that Aunt Lana was part of her history, was a big part of mine, and that she was always going to be part of our family and someone we loved. I told her we could love both of them, but as long as she competes with my aunt, she won't ever be able to get close to us, because she never tries to hide her feelings, and we can't just act like someone we love didn't exist. She had a tantrum where she called me an insensitive bitch. She told me I should have been dropping to my knees and apologizing for making her feel less than, but instead tell her she has no right to expect her place in the family to be put before a dead woman. I was shocked, as were the rest of the family who were very unhappy with her, especially Uncle Nick. But I do feel kind of bad. Am I the antagonist? Yo what? She got mad because your cousin made something for their mother's grave. NTA, if you compete with the dead, even more so when they were well-loved, when they were alive, you're gonna lose, hands down. NTA, she passed away, it's not like she abandoned them. Also, the fact that your family remembers her so fondly says a great deal of her as a beautiful person. Why should that person go into oblivion? It wouldn't be fair to her or her kids, who want to remember her. This new wife should create her own space in the family, but being petty won't help at all. 
I think it speaks volumes that you left that disagreement feeling bad, and she left it feeling angry. She sounds bitter and insecure. That's not on you or your family, that's her thing. I always taught my kids that you can never have too much love in your life. That goes for people that have died as well. You'll never forget them, nor stop loving them. Clearly no one ever taught your aunt that lesson. I feel bad for your cousins. You're clearly not the a-hole, and I hope she gets some clarity. She has to let her resentment of her husband's late first wife go. The family loved Lana, her husband loved Lana, and no one stops loving someone just because they died. Lana's kids will always love Lana as their mother especially. Janet needs to stop worrying about taking Lana's place and start forging her own, because right now her place is that sulky one who resents a dead woman. 